Uh, we have seen a few examples already. So, this is uh, one very relevant example. Can anybody recognize this system? Do you know what this system is? What is what is this uh, dynamics of? Yeah, this is a damped pendulum. Yeah, standard pendulum that we see invariably they are damped, right? There, there is friction at the joint. Yeah. So, uh, I cheated because otherwise I would have to do hard work like this to prove good things. Okay, I would have to construct functions like these and all. Yeah. That's why I have introduced another term here. Right? Um, if you see, uh, typically a pendulum will have dynamics x1 dot is x2, x2 dot is minus sin x1 minus x2. So, it is a nonlinear oscillator actually. Uh, it is a nonlinear oscillator. So, um, but I have introduced this minus sin x1, yeah, because it will make my analysis simpler, yeah. Otherwise, basically, it becomes complicated to follow. I mean, I can do the analysis, but uh, you will just say, why are we talking about such complicated things in class which you cannot follow? That is more of an assignment thing that you can try. Hmm? All right. So, what is the uh, Lyapunov candidate in this case? Is this guy? Hmm? Anybody recognize what this is? Anybody? What is this? For the pendulum system, what do you think this is? This function 1 minus cosine x1 plus half x2 square. Hmm? Energy. Exactly. Just think pendulum. Huh? x1 is this theta angle. Huh? So, 1 minus cos x1 is the potential energy. Huh? And uh, half x2 square is the kinetic energy. x1 is theta, x2 is theta dot. So, theta dot squared half gives you the kinetic energy. And 1 minus cosine x1 because cosine theta gives you the potential energy. Exactly the energy of the system. So, do not look at me funny ki, how did you come up with this and how will we do this in the test. That is the energy of the system in this case. Okay. All right. The more complicated thing is to discuss the definiteness of this. Hmm? It is, I hope it is evident to you that this becomes negative. Does this become negative? No, does not become negative. Uh, so, one thing is evident it is 0 at 0. Yeah, x1 0, x2 0, this is 0. Good thing. Yeah, because 0, 0 equilibrium is what we are thinking about. Yeah, this is the equilibrium. The downward e uh, equilibrium is what we are interested in. Great. Now, what happens if I take x1 to be arbitrary? Is that notice uh, how do we check for positive definiteness? We check where it becomes 0 and if any of those points are non-zero states, then we have a problem. Okay. So, this becomes 0 whenever 1 minus cosine x1 becomes 0 and 1 minus cosine x1 will become 0 at all 2 n pi. All 2 n pi, 1 minus cosine x1 will become 0. So, for the simpler case, at x1 equal to 2 pi, which is this position, right? This is theta equal to 0, this is theta equal to, no, no, not this position, right? coming back to this position, yeah. So, see, uh, this is another thing about uh, using Lyapunov functions and working in Euclidean space. Actually, the system is not in, really in Euclidean space, yeah, because uh, this is an angle, yeah, it is just, when you say 2 pi, physically it is the same configuration. But the Lyapunov function and the system does not recognize all this, okay? does not recognize that this is not the same configuration. So, when I look at x1 equal to 2 pi, this is still 0. So, for all states of the form 2 and pi comma 0, this is 0. So, this is not a uh, positive definite globally, yeah? like uh, Vidya Sagar likes to say LPDF and PDF. This is not PDF, this is only LPDF that is locally positive definite. Actually, we have only defined locally positive definite. 
So now this is the case where we have to define a BR, a ball of radius R around the equilibrium. What is the ball of radius R? We want x1 to lie between this and x2 can be anything. Okay. This is a funny looking ball, not a ball at all. But I hope you understand. There is something local about this. Yeah. In one axis, uh, if, if you draw it, it's like in one axis it is only this much. And in x2 axis it can go anywhere. And it's this cylinder actually. Huh? Cannot go further here. So minus pi and pi here. But in x2 you can do whatever. Ah, okay, fine. Yeah, this is x1. Huh? Okay. If you are not comfortable with this cylinder, you can take x2 to in, inside a whatever minus r to r and you are fine. You can actually make a ball. Yeah. If this makes you uncomfortable, this is fine too. Okay. So, inside this region, minus pi cross pi, minus pi comma pi cross r, notice the endpoints are not allowed. Yeah. The important thing to remember whenever I make this is that the equilibrium you are interested in should be within this. Huh? So, so I mean none of you asked me, but this was also a valid choice, right? Is this a valid choice for when this is positive definite? 0 is not included. Okay, so this is a sort of a problem. Yeah, and of course, so this is not okay. So, therefore, minus pi to pi is the only reasonable choice. You can think about it. Yeah. And remember, whenever we make neighborhoods or balls, they have to be open sets. Huh? We discussed this. I hope you keep this in mind. Therefore, this has to be open. Huh? Can't just say 0, 2 pi kahi bhi kuch bhi kar di. Aise nahi. Not like that. Huh? So, it can't be 0, 2 pi open, close or anything like that. It has to be open at both ends. Hmm? has to be an open set basically. So, this you will see that this is the only reasonable choice because inside this set 0 is the only point where v, will be, v is going to be 0 and everywhere else it is going to be strictly positive. Okay. All right. Great. So, once you verified this fact, this is the only problematic thing. You can see it is already decrescent. It is free because there is no time argument in v. So, so, V is already decrescent for free. You do not have to do any special work there. Hmm? Now, if I compute V dot as always, I will get sin x1 x1 dot from here and x2 x2 dot from here. Okay. Now, I substitute for x1 dot. So, sin x1 and x1 dot I substitute here and x2 x2 dot I substitute here. All right. Again, not doing anything too complicated. I am simply substituting the derivatives. In this case, because I have made a hack, everything turns out to be nice. We will see. We will see. Now, if you see this term and this term cancels out. Yes. All right. So, I am left with minus sin squared x1 minus x2 squared. Yes. Minus sin squared x1 minus x2 squared. Both are square terms. So, already I am feeling good. Yeah. All right. And now, if I look at, now I have to test the negative definiteness, by the way. Huh? My domain is fixed. Huh? I can't change this now. Just for V dot, I can't come up with a different one. I am, I am restricted to this same BR. Okay. Whatever that R is. So, in this case, I have chosen this open set. Yeah. So, I have to stick with this. I know that this is always a negative definite term. No problem. Where can this guy be 0? at x1 equal to n pi, hmm? x1 equal to n pi. Okay? So, the only possible candidate within this set is 0 itself yeah? because minus pi and pi are not, not in the set. All right? So, this guy is exactly 0 only when x1 and x2 are exactly 0, not 0 anywhere else. Okay? So, I really hope you are able to capture these subtle points here. Very subtle but very key. Uh, if you miss this, your analysis is wrong. If you don't give me this minus pi cos comma pi set, 
you cannot prove anything at all uh, that's completely wrong and if somehow these terms come out so that in this minus pi pi set there are multiple places where this is zero that is also a problem hmm? if uh, if if something like uh, let's see divided by 2 kind of a thing happened then what would happen hmm. suppose i ask you just to test now what the analysis will go through will it go through <laughs> good point will it even go through this will become sin x1 by 2 times half there will be a half here hmm and x2 x2 dot will be half here half here half here and a half here uh, this will also have a half now what happens analysis will not go through because of the this term but I can always cheat I like doing that so I will make this half okay I just played with the I've made things half so that analysis will go through I have just changed the dynamics a little bit there is minus sin x1 by 2 now okay so the analysis will go through I can promise you with this dynamics now now what about positive definiteness and so on where is it positive definite now what is the br all I need is the ball br what will it be minus 2 pi to 2 pi how are you computing it so you want 1 minus cosine x1 by 2 to be 0 you are looking at where that is 0 ah, so you want cosine x1 by 2 to be 1 ok where is that x1 by 2 has to be what 2 n pi 2 n pi is that correct Huh. Huh. Okay. So four four n pi. Huh. Four n pi. Okay. So or if you think of it as it will be if you think of it as plus minus, then it is plus minus two pi. So basically this set will become minus two pi to two pi. Okay. So this analysis is sort of you know expanding things. Okay. Expanding where you can work with minus two pi to two pi, which is more or less uh, going to cover everything I guess minus 2 pi to 2 pi will have 0 also and will also have pi huh? ok funny uh, so this, is, this makes it nicer actually uh, if I do x1 by 2 so, so if it so happened that your harmonic oscillator had x1 by 2 instead of x1 then this pi thing uh, so the pi thing will not be in equilibrium at all <laughs> Right, if you look at the equilibrium of this guy, hmm, what is the equilibrium? X2 equal to 0 is an equilibrium and sin x1 by 2 is an equilibrium. Has to be sin x1 by 2 equal to 0 is an equilibrium. So either x1 has to be 0 or x1 has to be 2 pi, which is the same as 0. So if I modified this uh, pendulum equation in this way, then this inverted position is not an equilibrium at all it's only this position and this position okay is that clear just by making x1 to be x1 by 2 okay i'm going to erase this sorry all right huh? this is just to minus pi to pi will still work the only thing is you have uh, yeah, I was I was expecting a more shorter, uh, more constricted region. Turned out to be the other way around. Uh, but minus pi to pi will still work. The only thing is you have given a smaller range, right? I mean, see, whenever you talk about local, when you say that it's stable, asymptotically stable. In this case, it turns out to be asymptotically stable, right? Of course, it's not global. Remember, 
Non-linear system, not global. In fact, in this case, pi is also an equilibrium. I rem remember I told you, if you have multiple equilibria, then global is not possible. Huh? Just like in optimization. Huh? So, it's fine. But whenever you give local results, it is you want to give as large a region as possible. Huh? Not the smallest one or not any one. Huh? You try to get the largest one. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, uh, there is another example here anyway so this is um, but before that uh, i want to you to uh, remember that there is also notions of converse lyapunov theorems which essentially says that there exists a lyapunov function for every stable system okay so remember uh, in these lyapunov theorems i mentioned that this is a candidate lyapunov function once this candidate lyapunov function satisfies any one of these results then it is called a Lyapunov function okay so this is a candidate satisfying any of these it becomes a Lyapunov function okay so what does the uh, converse Lyapunov theorem typically says it says that if it's if the equilibrium is stable then there exists some vtx positive definite c1 such that the Lyapunov theorem is satisfied Okay, so there do exist converse Lyapunov theorems. The problem is they are not constructive. It's not that the using the theorem you'll be able to construct a Lyapunov function. Yeah, so it's as good as I mean it's a nice mathematical result, but it's not going to help you construct anything. Okay, so actually, so you can think of it as an if and only if condition. The problem is you will never be able to get a v out of this converse. So therefore, you are still left with trying to hunt for the best Lyapunov candidate possible, okay. Any questions? So, uh, ah. is, uh, yes. Yes. Ooh. Um, what will leave the minus pi to pi bound? Uh, this is the natural dynamics of the system should make it go. Yes. Like, it's, like, uh, it's a pendulum. The pendulum is at rest, and maybe it's a very high return. It's very, very high. Like yes. It's the entire line. Yes. So then it would go beyond minus pi and come back to pi. And so Absolutely. It's a very good point. So whenever I <laughs> remember. Whenever I give this ball of region R, ball of size R or whatever domain I give you, yeah, uh, or, or the domain you come up with to ensure positive definiteness of this V and so on and so forth, yeah, you implicitly assume that your system trajectories always remain within this ball, okay, there is an implicit assumption, it is not being uh, given to you uh, for free or anything like that. So, yes, those are not allowed. Those are excluded. Okay. So, yes, if you want, you can make this R to be something smaller. Yeah. But then that will depend on, I mean, uh, you can understand, right? I can't solve this system to actually come up with that R. Hmm? It would be virtually impossible. I mean, this is the simplest nonlinear system, but you know, if you get to even a little bit more, you still you definitely won't be able to solve to get such an R. So, it is an implicit assumption that this uh, R is there. But then again, in, in a lot of these cases, just like here, if this was any BR, yeah, all these results would go through because the second term has no impact on definiteness. So, so a, for any uh, bound you choose on your theta dot, the results will go through. So, it is sort of, you know, you will still get your stability is what I am saying. Uh, but yes, I do agree that you will get out of uh, this. Uh, but one of the other things that I would like to also say is that I am not missing anything here, right, by doing minus pi and pi. Pi is the only one that I am missing hmm? and there is no choice but to miss pi. Remember, without missing pi, I am including the other equilibrium in my analysis. There is no way you will be able to prove even stability after that. 
because now your domain contains both equilibria. Yeah. So missing pi is not a choice. Yeah, I am very carefully missing pi here. Okay. So that this equilibrium does not because you you know for sure that if I start at this equilibrium and there is no disturbance or anything, yeah, then it is never coming back here, it is staying here. So therefore, no question of stability, right? So therefore, this is a problem point, and so I have to have to have to miss that point. Hmm. So yeah, if your velocity makes you go through it, then you have to hunt for uh, what we call semi-global type of results, yeah, which will essentially say that uh, okay, you sort of uh, you will not actually stay there because there is disturbance, and you are very even if you are arbitrarily away from it, you will fall back and so on and so. So we say things like that, yeah. But yeah, that's also an important point. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right, folks. We'll stop here. Thank you.